Sisters Before Misters, welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 TV gal pals. You know, we always wear two ends of the same bitch goddess spectrum. Maybe that's why we love each other so much. For this list, we are looking at those TV friendships between women that proved as long as you have your best friend, you really don't need anyone else. We'll spy through the window. Yeah, like watching R-rated television. My first shot at voyeurism. <laughs> Number 10. Jess Day and Cece Parekh, New Girl. Remember when Christmas used to be fun and all I had to do was worry about my drunk uncle asking me Yes, out? Uncle Pradeep. He thought I was a boy. What a weirdo. Everyone remembers their childhood best friend. For many of us, unfortunately, that friendship ended long before we grew into adults. Luckily, that isn't the case with Cece and Jess. You want this to go to Cece, right? Jess! Okay, I'll give it to Cece. Despite growing up to be completely different people, their opposite personalities and quirks have always balanced each other out making their friendship stronger than ever. I'm not like you, I don't just jump in the potato sack with the first potato that I meet with diabetes. Okay, what did you just say? You heard me, bitch! The defining trait of their relationship is how protective they are of each other, especially when it comes to dating and heartbreak. Jess supports Cece in all her endeavors, while Cece isn't afraid to physically harm any guy that hurts Jess. I have something, I have something to, tell, to you. tell you! What? No, I have something I need to tell you. No! Number nine. Hannah Horvath, Marnie Michaels, Jessa Johansson, and Shoshana Shapiro, girls. You're like Bella Swan from Twilight, and I'm like her weird friend who doesn't understand how fabulous her life is because my boyfriend won't spend $4 on tacos. No other show has better displayed what it's like to be friends in the 21st century than girls. <laughs> While the series may be best known for its explicit sex scenes, the friendships between the four main female characters lies at the very core of the show and is the reason why it's so critically acclaimed. <laughs> oh my god, Jessa. What? You just snot rocketed in the tub. That was gross. Sure, Hannah, Marnie, Jessa, and Shoshana don't always get along, but this show proves that not only are arguments healthy, but they can actually make a friendship stronger. Yay. Yay. Cheers! Cheers! 20. Cheers! Five. That's how old I am! I cannot believe it. How does it feel? It feels great! Together, the group is able to overcome the angst of emerging adulthood and self-esteem issues by sticking together in a modern world that often promotes distance. You are gorgeous and a vision. You are a brilliant genius. Both of you are sex goddesses. When I look at both of you, a Coldplay song plays in my heart. Number eight. Ann Perkins and Leslie Nope, Parks and Recreation. You just never know an opportunity is gonna strike. Yeah. You gotta be ready for it. Yeah. Are you excited? Definitely, yeah, I'm fired up. Yeah! I'm really fired up. Who would have guessed that a giant pit would lean to one of the best friendships on TV? Oh, 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 oh. Leslie, are you okay? Ann and Leslie quickly became friends on the first episode of Parks and Recreation after Ann used an open forum to complain about a giant pit near her house, and Leslie decided to help her solve her problem. Okay. I'll do something about it. Really? Yes, we, I will help you. Perhaps the best thing about the relationship is how they continually push each other to grow as individuals. That or Leslie's hilarious compliments. Leslie, Good for idea, God's Anne. Sakes. No, Anne, please, I beg of you, will you just shut your beautiful pie hole? She even helps Anne get a job with the Pawnee Health Department so they can spend more time together. Pawnee is looking for a new PR director for the Health Department, and I submitted your name. You have an interview tomorrow at 9 a.m. No matter where these two women end up, they will always be best friends. Yes, he is. He's gonna love you. You're cool, and you're sexy, and you're funny, and you're smart. Like, yeah. Any guy would be lucky to date you. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I am awesome. You are awesome. Yeah. And you are too. Number seven, Laverne DeFazio and Shirley Feeney. Laverne and Shirley. Hello, I'm Shirley Feeney, and this is Laverne DeFazio. <laughs> One's an outspoken tomboy, while the other is a stereotypical girly girl. Whoa, look at the price here. It's a year's rent. If we bought this, we'd have to live in it. Together, they formed one of the most iconic pairings in television history. What makes their friendship great is how they're always there for each other and help pick each other up. And we're gonna get you out of here right away, but in the meantime, I brought you some things from home. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's a change of underwear, make oh. sure you do <laughs> For all her tough talk, Laverne tends to get hurt easily, but Shirley is always there to support her friend. Boy, you were terrific, you were 
my braces. I did it. I got you out. I was strong and I did it. Oh, you sure did. As for Shirley, she became more confident over the course of the series, thanks in large part to living with Laverne. You won't get any secrets out of us. We got no secrets. <laughs> Makes it all the harder. <laughs> Number six, Dr. Meredith Gray and Dr. Christina Yang, Gray's Anatomy. Meredith, you know how sometimes it's about you and sometimes it's about me? This is really, really about me. Whoa. Mama took my eyebrows. Grey's Anatomy is essentially a soap opera set in a hospital, but for all of the relationships on the show, it could be said that the most important one is between Meredith and Christina. Known as the Twisted Sisters, their friendship lies at the very core of the series. Say what I would say to you if you were me. Okay. Good. Got it. Good. Go. Stop whining. This is your wedding day. You will go down that aisle and you will get married. If I have to kick your ass every step of the way to get you there, you will walk down the aisle, you will get married. Do you hear me, Christina? We need this. Rather than spending their time shopping or talking about boys, they pushed each other professionally and remained strong, independent females. I have no imagination, Mayor. Teddy sucked it out of me. Oh, let's not go there. We're just gonna believe that everything's gonna be okay. There's nothing fake or sappy about their friendship, and they aren't afraid to tell each other how they really feel, especially when the other needs to hear it. You're okay. We're gonna go when you're ready, okay? So you tell me when you're ready. At the end of the day, what more could you ask of a friend? You realize this constitutes hugging? Shut up. Number five. Arya Montgomery, Emily Fields, Hannah Marin, and Spencer Hastings, Pretty Little Liars. Emily and I aren't the only ones who got messages from A, are we? Pretty Little Liars is a show that revolves around secrets. I mean, obviously, it has the word liars in the title. But more than anything, it's a show about friendship. Friends share secrets. That's what keeps us close. While they may not be the most honest group of friends on our list, no one else has gone through the life-threatening obstacles they have. Is that jungle red? Color. From the alleged death of their clique leader to being blackmailed by an anonymous foe, these girls quickly realized that the only way to survive was to rely on one another. Don't say I never gave you anything. Turn on your computer. A. Hey. Sure, they may not be the kind of friends to let in on your deepest, darkest secrets, but at least you know you can count on them when someone's trying to murder you. Oh my god. It's from I got one too. I'm still here, bitches. And, and I, I know, know everything. A. Number four, Lucy Ricardo and Ethel Mertz. I love Lucy. Need two girls with courage for publicity stunt. High pay for right parties. I uh, no. What's the matter, haven't you got courage? Yeah, I got courage, but it says they need girls. One of the first pairs of gal pals to ever appear on screen. Without Lucy and Ethel, we wouldn't have any of the other entries on this list. They look like women from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> The pair met after Lucy moved into an apartment in New York City, which was owned by Fred and Ethel Mertz. Although Ethel was much older than Lucy, they quickly became inseparable. Here, you missed something on this one. That's a design. It is? Sure, can't you see flowers against the background of... gravy? <laughs> they get into business together on several different occasions, and while they are sometimes competitive, they are always there to support each other during difficult times. Plus, they have an awesome friendship song, even if their husbands don't quite understand it. It's friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. When other friendships a bit forget, ours will still be it. Number three, Monica Geller, Rachel Green, and Phoebe Buffay, friends. Huh, you know what? If we were in prison, you guys would be like my bitches. <laughs> Sure, Joey, Chandler, and Ross are just as important to the friends dynamic as the girls, but there's just something special about the friendship between these three women. Hey, I got a question. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick one of us to date, who would it be? I don't know. Me neither. Rachel. <laughs> what? I don't know. Me neither. Between their hilarious antics, these lovely ladies taught us all a great deal about friendship, including that boys never trump friendship, and no matter how much time passes, your best friends will always be there for you. Oh my god, Rach. Beanbag chairs. Oh. Do not let me sit in one of those. We'll be here for days. <laughs> While all three have their various quirks, it's because of these differences that they're able to form such a strong bond. 
Plus, sometimes at the end of the tough day, all you need is someone to sit on the couch in a wedding dress while throwing back beers. Hey, you know who might cheer you up? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I gotta tell you, this really does put me in a better mood. <laughs> Number two, Blanche Devereaux, Rose Nyland, Dorothy Zabornak, and Sophia Petrillo, the Golden Girls. I just never, never had two better friends. I just can't stand the thought of leaving you. <laughs> the first line in the opening credits of this classic series states, thank you for being a friend. And that pretty much sums up the entire show. You know, both of you were right about her. I can't believe that I couldn't see it. Can you ever forgive me? What do you think? Should we give her another chance? We better. Best friends are hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> These ladies prove that even in the golden years of your life, you can still maintain strong friendships. While Blanche, Dorothy, Sophia, and Rose came from four extremely different backgrounds, they quickly developed a bond that was stronger than any of the other relationships on the show. Now, do you think you can ever forgive me? I don't know. I have to think about it. I understand. Okay, I thought about it. I forgive you. <laughs> While they never held their tongues and told each other how they really felt, we always knew that they would all be together for a slice of cheesecake at the end of the day. Let's all drive to Coconut Grove for lunch. Okay. My treat. We'll have to celebrate. <laughs> what, that she came out of her room? <laughs> that we're together. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Rhoda, I thought 8.30 so obviously meant after dinner. Maybe you could whip up something quick. Huh? Whip up something quick. Right, right. I, uh, yes, I can whip up a carrot. I can, uh, whip up uh, a baked potato. Nothing, nothing. Look what I stole. <laughs> Look what I stole. <gasps> Hi. Here, Daniel. You see Sunnydale? I will be matriculating with a class of 2003. Are you serious? Say, isn't that where you're going? You're right, Max. You only live once. YOLO. <laughs> and you only live till the next time you say YOLO. Very Kripke just asked me out. Oh, look at you two guys in one day. I told you things would change if you plucked your eyebrows. <laughs> Number one, Carrie Bradshaw, Samantha Jones, Charlotte York, and Miranda Hobbs. Sex in the City. Okay. Ready, girls? Let's go. Several other groups of friends have attempted to navigate the treacherous landscape known as New York City, but none have done it like these women. It's a little hard to criticize if you're with someone who overeats when he's criticized. Miranda went out with an overeater and he overate her. <laughs> <laughs> this show is at its best when it showcases the friendship between Carrie, Samantha, Charlotte, and Miranda particularly when these bonds are tested due to sensitive subjects like promiscuity and sexuality. A sex schedule? Very romantic. Yeah, surprise him at the bar wearing nothing but a trench coat and a smile. Well, now that would be a happy hour. <laughs> While they may be constantly on the hunt for men, they always put each other first and created a strong support system that includes just as much love and trust as it does shopping and gossiping. Aesthetics are important to me. It's not what it looks like, it's what they can do with it. Well, I don't need one that can make its own carrying case. At the end of the day, this show proves that maybe your best friend is your soulmate. Don't laugh at me, but maybe we could be each other's soulmates. And then we could let men be just these great, nice guys to have fun with. Do you agree with our list? Which gal pal friendship do you think is the best on TV? You're a Waldorf, remember? People don't tell you who you are. You tell them. Stay and fight. I'll fight with you. For more awesome top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Oh no! I'm gonna work on that.